What's up, duelists? Some of you may recognize me from my channel. Some of you may not, so allow me to introduce myself. I am Awesome James, a good friend of Jesse Byrne and Team FTKs, and he wanted me to do a guest upload for you guys. Um, we've known each other for quite a long time, far be uh, before I even started becoming a YouTuber myself. So it is my honor and my privilege to bring you guys a deck profile of my own. Um, if you guys want to check out my channel, uh, it is called Awesome James. And I'm sure Jesse will put it in the description down below. Um, I do much more than just deck profiles. I do pack openings, uh, discussions, news updates, uh, top 10 list, just a, a plethora of different Yu-Gi-Oh content. So that way it's not, it's like a one-stop shop for everything. So if you guys want to check out my channel, please do so. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my deck profile. I am featuring one of my favorite decks to feature, and that is the Dark Magician deck that I have built. Um, this is a deck that I don't feature a lot just because there's so many profiles out there but I just absolutely love this deck and I figured why not give something a little bit different to Jesse's channel something a little bit more of an awesome James twist to it and uh, that's what this deck is it's an awesome James twist and I wanted to just profile it for you guys so without further ado let's start with the monsters so the first thing we're gonna run is the three dark magicians um, self-explanatory if you guys know how the dark magician deck runs you have to max this one at three um it is key i also use the red dark magician just because it's really really cool and then our next monster is magician's rod this is another staple at three this guy when you play him normal summon him he looks at the top uh he searches your deck not the top but he searches your deck for a dark magician spell or trap you usually go for your dark magical circle unless you have it in hand um just a very very key card to the play um, this works really, really well when you have, uh, what's her name? A Princess Illusion Magician right here. We'll get to her in a second. When you have her in the hand as well, these guys are a great starter piece to get this deck set up and really moving. So you definitely want to max out at three. Now this is a card I had a little bit of a hard time deciding whether or not it goes at two or three. Um, two is great, but three is also great. So it's kind of a kind of a hard thing to uh, determine here but I stopped at two just because I didn't want to make this deck over 40 cards so two uh, magician of dark illusions is really really good um, three works but at the same time some people face the issue of clutter so if you want to bring it down to two it works just as well um, it's hard to say whether or not to run it at two or three that's that's one of those based on personal preference type cards but a card that a lot of people run into that I run at three is a princess illusion magician this card when it special summons searches dark magician this card is powerful this card is good it can also tribute to give your uh, other dark magicians uh, our dark spellcaster monsters I call them magicians but dark spellcaster monsters an extra 2,000 attack just a really really good card overall um, a lot of people run this at two but I feel like that lowers the consistency to see it in your beginning hand and you want to see this in your beginning hand so to me that's a card you run at three over magician of dark illusion now for the other monster which we run outside of the dark magician engine I do run the wind witch engine now the wind witch engine the only um, difficult part with this is that it limits you to wind based monsters so if you open up with this don't expect to special summon any dark magicians apprentice illusion magicians or anything like that um, you will be able to get your normal summon off of your magician's rod if needed but you would really just be using this to get a powerhouse on the board and then set up your board for a uh, uh, for a dark magician play during your opponent's turn to disrupt them but it's just a really really good engine it also benefits that they're all spell casters and the fact that this uh, level one tuner snowbell can be used with dark magician to make another monster just really really good you can also combine this with other cards and end up making a uh, trishula so it's just a really really good engine to run and then i run little boy blue uh we run the spellbook engine as well just because it's so great in a spellcaster based deck and then for hand traps i run two ash blossom two drolls uh, honestly i would do three ash if i had them but i don't have them so i stick at two ash um, Ash and Joel are self-explanatory. They're almost necessary in today's meta, especially if you're playing on a more competitive level. Um, your cheap replacements would be Effect Veiler and Ghost Ogres. Um, those are probably the cheapest hand traps that I would replace these with. 
Um, other than that, you kind of really need these guys, unless Max C was to come back. Um, but yeah, that's it for the monsters. Let's go ahead and move on to the spell cards. Our first spell card is Dark Magical Circle. This is a definite three of. This is your playmaker right here. This card allows when Dark Magicians are summoned for you to banish any card on the field. And then it also allows you to uh, look at the top three cards when you activate it. And then add a Dark Magician card from uh, the top of your deck to your hand and put the other two back. It's just a really, really good card. Just a really powerful card. And you definitely want to see that in your beginning hand. If not, you want to see Magician's Rod. So essentially you have six circles. Um, and then next we run one Dark Magic Attack. This is a card you can throw out if needed. It destroys back row, but the fact that Eternal Souls can search it is just really, really good to have it in the main deck. Um, a lot of times board wipes don't work as much as they used to. So if you wanted to throw this out for like an extra jaw supporter or something like that, you could. But for me, this just does wonders, mainly because I don't play a lot of competitive anymore. I play a lot of casual, and casual you see more back rows, so this works really, really well. But if I was to make this competitive, I would definitely take that out and probably throw in like an Alora Darkness or something like that to increase the draw support of the deck. And then for the Spellbook cards, I run two uh, Spellbook of Secrets and two Spellbook of Knowledge. Um, essentially, Secrets is to thin out the deck, and then Knowledge is to tribute a spellcaster and draw your two. Um, you could tribute your Dark Magicians when Eternal Soul is on the field and just get extra um, power and then Eternal Soul will bring a Dark Magician back. So it's just really, really good. Um, a lot of people play one secret. I just think two secret works better. Uh, search out your knowledge. And if you happen to draw into a secret late game, then eh. <laughs> and that round one Illusion Magic, tribute a monster, get your Dark Magicians to your hand. Another way to get Dark Magicians if you have, happen to not see Apprentice. And then I ran two Forbidden Chalice. Great um, extra kind of like hand trap cards. Uh, if you guys don't know what Chalice does, if you're newer to the game and haven't seen it, um, you target one face-up monster in the field, and until the end of the turn, that target gains 400 attack, but its effects are negated. So if somebody's trying to go over one of your Dark Magicians, you can increase in its attack, or you can negate the effect of an, an opponent's monster just a really really good card to have overall and then I run my spicy tech for the deck quiet life I run it at two it's not good at three just because you don't want to see two in your beginning hand but what quiet life does is you activate it at the start of your main phase and essentially it allows you either to normal summon or special summon and if you do one you cannot do the other um, a lot of decks need their normal summon to begin their special summoning plays um, essentially think about the Armageddon Knight decks Armageddon Knight needs to be normal summoned to keep going. Um, ABCs usually require a normal summon to get going. And then just a lot of decks have the need for that one normal summon. Some decks have the need for two normal summons and they use something like Seraphonite to get it off. So if you have Quiet Life on the board after you got your back row set up to bring out Dark Magician during your opponent's turn, essentially you're going to rely on your special summons and your Dark Magical Circle to banish stuff. And if they're limited to their normal or special summons, um, either their normal or their special summons, then you kind of hurt a lot of decks. Now, some decks can work past this card, and this card doesn't affect everything. So, for some people, it might be a great side deck option, but for me, this is a great main deck option, and it works in a deck like Dark Magicians really, really well, and I think it's a very underrated card. I think a lot of people really overlook that card. And then for our traps, I run three Magician Navigation. Now, I thought about running two Navigation and three Eternal Souls, but Eternal Souls is a very detrimental card. Um, it could really, really hurt you. But Navigation is just that free card that also has a graveyard effect. So it's just a really, really good card to run in Dark Magicians. Now, it does it does have a little bit of hindrance. If you happen to get your Dark Magicians to your hands and already on the field or in the grave before you get your Navigations, Navigation becomes kind of a dead card. But overall, it's just a great card to have. Um, and like I said, Eternal Souls, you could do Eternal Souls at 3 and this at 2, and it'll work as well. It's just Eternal Souls has a little bit of detriment, and there's a lot of destruction effects now. So that's why I run Eternal Souls at 2. Eternal Souls is really, really good, though. So every turn, you get the special summon a Dark Magician, or you can search out Dark Magic Attack if you wanted to. Um, that's why I run Dark Magic Attack, because Eternal Souls can search it. Now, Eternal Souls has the weakness that it basically Raigekis are bored if they destroy it. But it also protects your uh, Dark Magicians from your opponent's card effects. 
Um, when I very, very, at the very beginning of my dueling career, when I returned and I was playing this deck, um, <laughs> I did not, I totally forgot about the Dark Magicians being unaffected by card effects. And while one of one of my guys was on board, a guy who played Paleo's Book of Moon, and I didn't even think about it. So um, that's just a really, really good effect overall. And uh, the fact that the only downside is this being destroyed, it's just a really good card to run, a very good card. Um, great recovery options, and it's just the it's key to the deck. Like these trap cards, you need them. And then last but not least, I run two Torrential Tribute. Um, just great for board wipes if your opponent's kind of gotten over your dark magicians and you have no real play to go having this in your backboard as they're getting the plays uh going off and you blow up their board like mid uh turn and a lot of decks can't recover if you time these right if you time these just right they usually end their turn um especially if you combine that with the quiet life that you've seen um earlier it's just a really really good card to run in this deck and a great budget option if you don't run something like evenly matched or infinite or permanence uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the uh, extra deck. Now, first and foremost, since we do run the Wind Witch engine, you know we're going to run Winter Bell and then Synchro Dragon. Both great cards to have. Uh, just very, very powerful cards. And then next, I do run one Cyframe Lord Omega. Omega, now, you can't make him with the uh, Wind Witch engine because you're limited to Wind Monsters. But... If you happen to draw into the level 1 tuner while you have a Dark Magician on board, you can actually make this card. So that's why I run it. And then a combination of monsters with the level 1 tuner can also make the uh, Trishula. So Trishula is still a pretty good card. I think it's a little underrated and just overall great card to run. But let's look at the rank 7s. The rank 7s are where this deck really, really excels. So first I do run one Ebon Illusion. Illusion has great combo potential with the fact that you can special summon a Dark Magician. Um, works really well with your Link plays as well. It's just a really, really good card to run. Um, back before Master Rule 4, uh, I did run this uh, I did run this at 2, but now it's down to 1. Norito the Moral Leader. This is a great rank 6 to run. Um, if you happen to have 2 Apprentice Illusions, you can make this um there's not many times where you will make this because you would do something else with your apprentice but there are times where this card can come in handy and then probably the most busted seven galaxy tomahawk this card is just crazy stupid this card this card should be honestly limited or banned probably banned just because how busted it is summoning crazy amounts of tokens and then red eyes flare metal dragon card another card that's busted just a great powerful card basically burns your opponent upon everything they do it's just a really really good card also a great card when you go into time and then we have a mecha phantom beast draco sack draco sack's also a good card it spawns tokens for link plays if you need it also has a built-in destruction effect uh, a lot of decks don't run this card just because tomahawk kind of takes its position but i feel like this card is still great to run and then number 11 big eye um, also good for decent link plays. You take one of their monsters, one of their powerhouse monsters, and link with it. Just really, really good. And then for our links, we do run one link spider since we do spawn tokens. Akashic Magician. Now this card, a lot of people don't run it. I feel like this card works well with the Dark Magician deck. Especially if you have cards like Eternal Souls. You bounce back your Dark Magician, special summon it back, use Circle's effect. It just overall has a great effect. And the fact that it's a dark spellcaster just made me want to run it more. And then I run one proxy dragon just for a generic link to. You can run any generic link to. I just happen to have proxy here. And then decode talker for our rank uh, link three, not rank three. And then for our link four, topologic bomber dragon. I feel like this is the best option if you're going budget. Now, if you happen to have a boar load or saruja, this would obviously be better, especially boar load. Boar load probably the best option for this deck. But I made this one a little bit more budget. This deck is actually kind of crazy budget if you think about it. And I wanted to incorporate a cheaper and more affordable, but still a very playable and powerful Link 4. So that's why I chose Bomber Dragon instead of Boar Load. And then moving on to the side deck. The side deck's interesting because there's some decent cards in here. And you're going to be like, what? <laughs> so the first is our third, Joel. Joel's just great. And then I run two called by the graves. 
Um, I try, uh, honestly, these would be main decked if I wanted to side deck uh, Quiet Life. But I like main deck and Quiet Life. But if I did side deck Quiet Life, this would be in my main deck. And then one board wipe, Raigeki, Dark Hole, anything like that works well. Um, certain matchups, board wipes go really, really well in this deck. Certain matchups, they're just kind of bad. Same for the Interrupted Kaiju Slumber and the Kaijus. Now my Kaiju list is two Kamungus and a Radiant. And that's because they're all level 7s. And this one's a dark uh, level 7, by the way. But they're all level 7s, meaning you can still um, exceed summon with them. So that's why they're all the ones that you see here. Instead of Gamma Seal, who's an 8. Um, just a really, really good card. And then two red reboots. That would run red reboot at 3. But unfortunately, I just did not have the space that, uh, for it. Red reboots are really, really good card. You really don't want to face an infinite and a permanent. I mean, not an infinite and a permanent. So that, that card's no problem. You do not want to face an evenly matched with this deck. So you want to be able to counter it if your opponent decides to side it in. Or if you have the inclination that they're siding it in. So that's why I run the red reboots. And then two chaos. He's a really, really good card. Just a really, really nice side deck option. Counters other decks perfectly. And just a really, really easy card to summon with this deck. And then last but not least, the Viruses. Um, this should be Eradicator. I just don't have an Eradicator. So it would be Eradicator, Deck Devastation, and Full Force Virus. Um, the three Viruses counter different decks. But if you're going first and you happen to summon Apprentice Illusion or if you're able to summon Dark Magician with this on your back row, you can really shut down and stop a deck from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, now they're at one ofs just because honestly I want to have the different options now you could play three of deck devastation virus this is probably the best option in my opinion uh, or you could th uh, play three of full force and it'll work just as well that way you have the consistency of the virus more but at the same time a deck like paleo for example you want to have eradicator epidemic um, that way you can call traps and get all their traps into the grave um, just really really good overall but that's it for this deck profile guys let me know down in the comment section below what you think and make sure you also subscribe to team ftk i know they recently hit 1000 subscribers they're awesome people um great great players great great people and i would love if you guys go support them also if you like this video check out my channel as well um like i said i bring great Yu-Gi-Oh content as well uh but my channel is a little bit different i'm not strictly deck profiles and all that stuff i do openings and other weird shenanigans and fun stuff so if you want if you want to see a little bit of diversity in the channel make sure to check out my channel as well but as always guys i thank y'all so much for watching thank you so much jesse for allowing me to guest upload and as always guys i want y'all to keep it classy and stay awesome <laughs>